All right, so welcome to the Nitty Gritty. That's what we call ourselves. The Nitty Gritty? The yeah, Nitty Gritty Podcast. <laughs> yeah, oh, really? Just get down to the Nitty Gritty. Not all the seasoning. All the seasoning. <laughs> The seasoned meat. That's what we were going to call it. The seasoned but, meat? Yeah. Or Cam and Andrew's Magical Meat Show. You guys really missed the boat. <laughs> <laughs> we can always rebrand. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're sitting down with the one and only Susan Peterson. Whoop. The magician behind Freshly Picked. How many of your listeners have children? Probably all of them. Really? Yeah, we're going to sell ton of mocks today ton of plus mocks. i'm excited to tell you tell them about you launching your adult line finally oh yeah size uh nine through 16 <laughs> men's moccasins green. i have been trying to get peter pan colored A size peter 15 pan. moccasins for what six years yeah but i, since we I said i'm not doing it because you'll stop talking to me if i do i know what kind of guy you are cameron <laughs> Whatever. once you get what you like, want you're I out give, of you're out I of there give him what he wants yep. i won't get free swatches yeah. anymore that's yeah, bull I've crap. Seen, I've seen your kind. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited for this one. We've been friends for what? Even, how did we become friends? Was it the restaurant or Jill? Maybe? No, I can't remember when you first opened. Chris and I came in like three nights in a row. Is that what it was? I think so. And then Jilly. Right. I oh. think that's yeah through some blogging stuff oh, with my maybe aunt. through Scott Warner. Could be. Yeah. Could be. But yeah, we've been we were we became fast friends. Mm-hmm. And so. Yeah, I, I feed your office once in a while. Mm-hmm. You throw, you know, you give me some mocks once in a while. Yep, but you're out of mocks. Your kids are, yeah. That's why I want you to open the adult line. Probably not. Does anybody ever, like, I mean, slippers for adult, they don't want them? I just, no. I mean, <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I guess I kind of get that. It's kind of like people asking me to do salmon. Or salads. I'll do, you See, know what? salad, I'm kind of thinking. I hear a compromise. Sa- salad coming. might happen. I, I might make you some mocks if you if you get me a salad. Remember when I used to bring in my own salad and cut up yeah. the meat? <laughs> Maybe that's where the inspiration came from because salad is on the top three. Shit. Like, I mean, something else. <laughs> <laughs> something salad else. is on the top three list. Okay. Because we'll I got to get more girls in here somehow. And maybe that'll do it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so freshly picked, the mocks, every, everyone knows I mean, you don't need an introduction anymore. Sure. One thing I love about Susan is she just keeps it real. Like, I feel like we have fun conversations. You know, I feel like a lot of people in your position of power and strength (laughs) don't really keep it real anymore. Sure. But you do, and I love it. Thank you. And, you know, you you can see it with your kids. You have two awesome kids, and they speak their mind. They do it like they just, they're they're little free spirits just like you are. They're fun. So... Let's get into it. Let's go. That was quite the introduction. It was a good so, one. So, did you feel good about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <You're good. laughs> yes, I felt great about it. All right, so how long has Freshly Pick been around? Ten years this year. Holy crap, really? What is your anniversary? Uh, September. Wow. Ten years? Mm-hmm. Are you still into it? Are you still you still love it? Yeah. <laughs> Why did you say it like that? Yeah. Yeah. I think just entrepreneurs, you just fall in and out of love with your business all the time. For sure. It's just part of like running a business. And so, yeah, I'm still definitely into it. Um, I still own enough of it that I have to be into it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm into it. I just think, um, you know, some years are harder than others. So. Why? Why are some years like what, what burns you out or what gets you what burns not, ex- me out? not excited about it? And how do you overcome it? Um, so different, well, we're getting right into it. Let's go. Come on. (laughs) I think for me, the, the challenges, the problems I like to solve are related to brand marketing, um, acquisition, engagement, influence, um, product and the problems I don't like to solve are like cogs, inventory, fulfillment. Ugh. So like, the, like the efficiencies Taxes. of running the business. And yeah, stuff. I call it top line problems versus bottom line problems. Yeah, I feel like to solve top line problems, like yeah, let's go, let's make a ton of money. But um, it's the creative side of you. Yeah, I mean, I always say I just want to make enough money so no one can tell me how to spend it, but it doesn't work <laughs> like that, I guess. <laughs> people, I like people have ideas. So no, I'm not burnt out right now. Um, I would say I just barely. 
rounded the corner from being burnt out last year was kind of a <clears throat> challenging year and so i'm feeling good now is there anything you're mm. excited about anything either you're yes. coming up with new or so our fringe we started a membership program last year okay and i'm super stoked on that it's called the fringe um i can't talk about it without it sounding like a plug so you ready go, go for it plug. <laughs> listen uh, yeah plugs are good i mean um so it's ten dollars a month that turns into ten dollars store credit, so you never lose your money. Right. So you basically get it back, like it doesn't really cost anything, and then you get twenty percent off all the time, free shipping, early access, um, so, exclusive sales, um, and we currently have twenty six thousand members in it. Whoa! So how'd you come up with that idea? Um, it was kind of born out of necessity. We we wanted to uh, add enterprise value to our, our to our business. And as a branded cons- direct consumer product, it's hard to, you, you have to buy the customer back every day when you're, huh. when you're selling online, you like, they don't know you're there. Right. Even if they follow you on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, you're being, you know, uh, ba- like, uh, throttled so they don't see you. So you have to buy them back every day. So we were trying to figure out a way to be top of mind with customers and also Instagram, Facebook, everywhere has changed. Your community used to live on Instagram where you could talk to people and they would actually hear you and talk back. And we noticed that our community was kind of going away. So um, it was a way to like build a community again. So with that, has it re-engaged them on Instagram and social media or Um, have you engaged them now somewhere else? Yeah. So we have a private Facebook group that they sit in. So we have about almost 13,000 members in there. So okay. about half of our customers, half the fringe members are on there. So how'd you come up with that model? I mean, the idea of a subscription base, but the way you're running it is different than most. Yeah. So we uh, studied a ton of subscription models and then um, created this page that had infinite number of um, variables. It was like that we sent, I don't, I think 5,000 people to that was like, we're starting a membership model here's for $20 you get X and just see, see what the um, engagement, the acquisition was like on those pages. And the most popular was $10 a month for 20% off. Hmm. Yeah. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. How'd you, so yeah. Actually, Ethan, my COO kind of, he pushed it forward. Do you think that's kind of like, I mean, is it like prime in a sense? I mean, do you think Amazon, uh, I wonder if that's kind of why I think it's just the way that we interact with product and what we buy and brands we like. We want to be more invested. And so... Well, especially with you, because I feel like Freshly Picked's always done a good job of like, whenever I say Freshly Picked, you know, especially around like my wife, Mm -hmm. they, they just love it. Yeah. And I think that that's, you know, the community idea is kind of brilliant because it's... they. Even though it's grown so big, it still has that kind of small and accessible feel to it. And I think that'd be a fine line on how to balance that. It is. It's definitely tricky. When you have uh, almost a million followers across all your social media, right. it starts to feel like this brand doesn't listen to me. So the Fringe has definitely re-engaged a lot of people. I don't feel like you listen to me. I don't. What do you <sighs> say? <laughs> she unfollowed me once. And I noticed listen. It. Listen. She I made the mistake you. of downloading one of those stupid like. Was it freshly picked or was it me personally? Freshly picked doesn't follow me anymore. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. So I made the mistake of downloading one of those like apps that tells you like who unfollows you. Oh yeah. It was the most unhealthy week of my life. Oh, embarrassing. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, because everyone's like, dude, it shows you all these analytics, blah blah blah. And I'm like, first of all, what are analytics? And then. Anyway, so after one, it's like Yelp reviews. I can't read them. I took it all personally. But there, the one week I had it, it said freshly picked, unfollowed you. And I text you. I'm like, what the freak? You unfollowed me. Oh, it's probably one of my staff. I'm sorry. So anyway, yeah, well, that was the on. one person follow. that hurt me the most. Freshly picked follows Cameron. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> You're such a crybaby. <laughs> it just means I care about you. Jeez. Thanks. You're my homie. Thanks. So... Okay, so we we got to touch on Shark Tank. I'm sure, sure you just said something earlier before we started recording that I've been struggling with. So this is a question that I can learn from. But sometimes I get sick of telling the story over and over again. Yep. So 
Are you like, I mean, how, are you still like that? Like when people ask you about Shark Tank, does that get, because that was what, 2013? Mm-hmm. Does mm-hmm. it get old? Um, n- No. It sort of, but <laughs> it used to, I feel like I just have a different perspective on it and it's been so long that I'm to the point where I only see the good things from it and not right. any of the crazy stuff. Like it was, um, filming a show is actually a pretty traumatic experience. Oh, Don't you think? Ima- oh, Wouldn't I you agree? I can only imagine. Well, didn't you film? I did. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know about that. I think I'm allowed to talk about it now. But yeah, I almost had a show on Food Network. I mean, we filmed for like, God, it was like a two-year process. And it's, it, it's exhausting. It's traumatic, too, because right. you're like, wait, do these producers actually like me? Or are they trying to get me to do something that will look good on TV but not be for my benefit or for my co- company's benefit? And we've all seen those people go on Shark Tank where you're like, how did you get here? <laughs> Did no one right. tell you this was a bad idea? And I filmed with a guy like that where he's like, oh, I do custom jeans. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. I want custom jeans. Right. And he's like, well, I'm actually here to ask for $3 million because uh-huh. uh, the company went bankrupt two years ago. And I was <laughs> like, I know how this ends. Don't go out there. And he went out right before me and they just like shredded him. Oh. Just Can you watch the other people while you're there? No, you only while you're on deck. Yeah. You know what that means? <laughs> it's a football term. Baseball. <laughs> <laughs> when you're on deck. Um, is that what the touchdown thing is? Yeah, sure. <laughs> when you're on deck, you wa- you kind of can see the person in front of you. Okay. And he filmed right before me. So I saw him. Because the other thing, those episodes are, what, an hour, hour and a half long? You're actually pitching? Uh, yeah. W- I mean, your time, your time that you're filming yeah. is actually, yeah, it's like an hour. Yeah. And you're oh, scrolls man. down to, what, seven, seven minutes. eight minutes, something yeah. like that? Yeah. And you have no control over that edit. Nope. But yours turned out good. Yeah. So I, uh, I think if you go on Shark Tank and you get, you get ripped a new one, <laughs> you're maybe not self-aware, is what I think. Because what I did was I watched every episode and I wrote down every question that they asked, and then I created flashcards with the answers on the back, so I knew every question that they could ask. Um, and then I was like, well, they could bring me on for, to fail, but at this point, it's worth it. Like, the exposure, um, the possibility of working with one of those sharks is worth it. So I just pushed through. But when I get nervous, I, I like, become really stoic. And so every time my producer saw me that day, he gave me a Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> and I would just, like, guzzle it. I don't because you're nervous. That's why I tried to offer you you a bang before we started. You know, just wanted to be spunky. Because he's like, you're not doing well on camera. (laughs) So by the time I got out there, I think I could breathe. Like I could see the air. Yeah. Yeah. I had like so much caffeine in me. I was like (laughs) seeing molecules of air. The Matrix. Yeah, sure. Um, And it was it was nerve wracking and really scary. But I feel like I did a good job, and I the company came off looking great, and myself as an entrepreneur, I came off looking great. So it was a win win, but you know, they really mess with you. They're like, Hey, we're going to go to a sound stage and everyone's going to have to practice in front of everyone. Um, don't bring, you don't need anything. Jeez. And we're all wearing like light t-shirts cause it's 90 degrees in California. Right. The sound stage is 40 degrees yeah. and Jeez. you're sitting on a metal chair for like three hours. And not only that, someone's, um, applying new, they're like, it's so cold because that guy is, um, refinishing the floor. So it smells like, uh, what's that varnish stuff in there? And so you can't think you're getting high. <laughs> like <laughs> It's freezing. You just want to get out of there. Just getting more uh, value I mean, out of you. Sure. They, they, they're trying to figure out where you're going to break. I think at, at the end of the day, Shark Tank is a television show sure. first, a closed door investor meeting second. And neither of those um, is w- w- the entrepreneur valued. Or, I want to say valued. Um, put first. It, yeah. Put first. There we go. Yeah. So if you can kind of navigate that whole um, world, then you can come out on top, I think. Well, I think you just being assertive to the fact that there's the entertainment side and then what I need for my business and you noticing it. It's like American Idol. Mm -hmm. Like there's a great singer and then there's two morons where you're just like, what the? They're just there for Simon to make fun of, right? Mm -hmm. How'd they get in there? Do you still watch the show? No, I can't. 
No. No. I get uh, PTSD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for real? Yeah. Well, they they mess they because they messed with me so hard. <laughs> they got wow. I got to the point where you know you you see the the doors open and the the entrepreneur walk down what they call the Ooh, chute right. yep. with the sharks on the side. Uh-huh. And I was they opened the doors. And I took a step and then my producer grabbed me and pulled me back. And they're like, your mic's not working. And they shut the doors. (laughs) And I was like, looked at him and I'm like, I'm going to throw up. And he's like, you're not going to throw up, Susan. Oh, (laughs) could you imagine if somebody just like walks through and. (laughs) (laughs) So they, then they kept me back. They were just, they were, they try to break you. They want emotion. They want you to cry. They want, at the end of the day, they're trying to get the audience to connect with you. And I think they thought this girl is. (laughs) Wow. <laughs> How are we going to get this girl to break? She's a powerhouse. But I mean, I, I would think that I think, well, and you saw the reaction from them. Your story mm-hmm. is, I think that that's what we're trying to find here with the podcast is start from nothing stories yeah. that have turned it. I mean, and, and I don't know that I know anybody personally that has a better from zero to a hundred story than, than you. Mm, and I mean, that's, I mean, Mark Cuban said it was his favorite entrepreneur story, right? Yeah. So that's do you believe cool. that? Do you believe that? No, <laughs> I think his story is his favorite entrepreneur story. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably, true. you know what? I don't, I ne- I never believe the hype Yeah. because if you believe the hype, then you have to believe the crap about yourself. That's... So you can't, you can't, you can't cherry pick that. And I don't really, I mean, it's sweet in the moment. Is and it, it made hype, me feel though? better. Yeah. How many people are crushing glass out of windows? I mean, for those people that don't know, I mean, you're recycling the aluminum frames mm-hmm. of scrap windows yeah. to get a couple hundred bucks together to buy a leather. cow's worth of leather. Yeah. I mean, come on. I think I think what they liked about that story is it represented the, the American spirit, which sure. is what that show is about. Right. And so they're all trying to do these sound bites that even Kevin, I mean, in person, I'm obsessed with Kevin. If Kevin was like, Susan, leave Chris, come live with me (laughs) in my vineyard. I would have a hard time saying no, no, I love my husband, but, um, I wouldn't leave. I would not leave my husband, (laughs) but I think (laughs) that's true. He could live in the guest quarters. Sure. 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 I think, um, I think that they're trying to get sound bites and they're trying to make good TV like that. Most right. of them are producers, so it's top of mind for them. But no, I think I think it's hype. Yeah. Hmm. So had you done anything previous to I'm making moccasins, anything that would have prepared you, led you into entrepreneurship at all? Well, uh, my parents always had side hustle. My dad, my dad was a, 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 a an educator, and my mom they had five kids in seven years, and a school teacher's budget is like pretty narrow and thin. And so from the time I can remember, my parents were always doing side gigs. My sisters and I, we like baked bread and sold cookies and we were always doing stuff. Um, So I feel like um, what's amazing about the internet and where we're at right now um, with this digital age is Side hustles before kind of always left you in the cash economy and you can't build wealth or businesses with cash. Mm -hmm. You need, you need more than that. And now with the internet and the digital age, you can build wealth, you can build businesses, you can build really amazing things with side hustles. And essentially that's what almost every business on Etsy that makes it big, which is, I'm part of that. It all kind of starts out as a side hustle. When did you see like legs in this? Like when did you feel hey this this could go somewhere this as, isn't a, a, side as opposed hustle to just being a side hustle yeah yeah um so was it was with the moccasins before the moccasins i was making um just kind of whatever i thought would sell on etsy it was just terrible crap. like what <laughs> like i would applique onesies it was mostly baby stuff okay or i was making um dresses or bags or it was terrible like <laughs> terrible stuff sorry and um, so I had an Etsy shop where I would list all this product. And then I had a blog because someone had told me you can't have a successful Etsy shop without a blog, which was kind of, uh, it was like social media essentially yeah. back then. So I would make stuff and I would put it on my blog and you know, it, it did okay. I was probably bringing in like $500 a month, 
which at the time was like, wow, that's groceries, yeah, that's right. clothes, that's that's our fun money, you know. Um, Chris and I were actually on food stamps when I started Freshly Picked. Wow. So um, I always told Christian, my husband, if I could find that one product that people kind of reacted to in a, in a meaningful way, I know I could make a business out of it. Because I, I started Etsy when there were probably 600 people on Etsy. So I had seen some of my friends uh, just kind of hit this um, – like stride with a product and really, you know, go on the today show and do all these amazing things with it. So when I had Gus, I started making baby shoes for my son who just turned 10. And, um, I decided I, I tried to make him a pair of moccasins and I just kept, kept at it until I found a pair that I liked, put it on my blog really with no intention ever of selling them. And people were like, Oh, I'll buy those. So I put a ton in my shop and they sold, ton of my shop they sold and I did that like three or four times okay and then I was like I think there's something here so when you told your husband I can make a business out of that was it just kind of confidence in yourself like I can do that like I've seen other people do that it's mm -hmm. almost like your first like community right was your Etsy yeah shop people it's like hey if they can do that I can do it mm -hmm. is that kind of what it was yeah I mean I always look at people and I'm like they don't look smarter than me yeah <laughs> <laughs> if they can do it I could do it you know <laughs> yeah See, I feel the opposite. I look at everybody like, they're all so much smarter than me. You have imposter syndrome? <sighs> Let's talk about your imposter syndrome. <laughs> I've never heard of imposter syndrome. You haven't? My really? therapist sucks. Oh, gosh. I have the best therapist. Really? Mm -hmm. See, I like he that likes, we're talking He likes to work therapy. with CEOs. Really? And you go in and I'm like, I'm not talking about this. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about this. Here are the things we can talk about. And he's like, okay. Wow. See, I'm, I'm down to talk about whatever, though. Oh. I'm pretty open that way. Okay. So I'm maybe not. that will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So where Sidebar. did the so where did the sewing come? Like when did that start? Did you learn when you were younger? No, I, I taught myself. Really? Yeah. Well, uh, my mom sewed, but we weren't allowed to touch her machine because <laughs> right. she made clothes for our whole family. Wow. So I grew up wearing handmade clothes. Like I'd see a T-shirt at school. I'm like, ooh, I like that, and she'd go buy the fabric. And like, even in high school, she was making our clothes. Wow. So you just and you taught yourself around the Etsy time like yeah, when you were so doing that stuff when my daughter was born my friend I'd gone I was like so we were so poor right. and I would like kind of do whatever to try to make money so I was like nanny in the neighbor down the street and I was like you know the girl that sells glow necklaces at like the fireworks show <laughs> I was like that girl like I'd go to the dollar <laughs> store and buy glow necklaces and then resell them and I had gone to my friend's house and she had all, she has like sewing stuff. And I was like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I'm just making stuff and selling it online. And I was like, oh, you're no smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> so I talked my mom into buying me a sewing machine. I started making stuff and selling it online. Wow. Yeah. Did your parents instill that in you? The, yeah. You, like you're not smarter than me. Like did they instill kind of that confidence? No, in you? no, that's, that's that's an idiot talking, <laughs> right? Um, no, I'm a middle child. So I think like you look at your older siblings and your younger siblings, you're like, oh, they're not smarter than me. So <laughs> Little That's child awesome. has to fight, man. The little yeah. child has to fight for what they, you know, because it's it so is many true. benefits. Though. You do. You oh, totally man. do. They're Are the, you middle kid? No, I'm the oldest. Yeah. Like so. time for time to clean the bathroom. Oh, I got or the kitchen. I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like I think the oldest at least in my family, I think I got the most, but I also like got knocked around the like punished the, mm -hmm. the hardest because mm -hmm. the parent is very invested. Mm -hmm. But then as it, yeah, as I you think get with more your kids, first, you're just like, oh, whatever. Get, your first you know. kid, you think you actually have influence in the outcome of the child. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then you're your delusional. Still. Yeah. Your second and third one. You're like, Oh, right. it doesn't matter what I do. Yeah. You kind of have to fend for yourself. But by that third kid, it's like, you mm -hmm. got to make some noise. Mm -hmm. And I think that that, and it's funny because we've done a few of these now and it seems like, you know, these have all been successful people, but it seems like there's, there's a common thread that there is some sort. I like the word. I like side hustle. Mm. I haven't really thought of it. Like even with me, like to, to pay for the groceries, I was selling barbecue out of the driveway on Saturdays. Like that yeah. was, that's what was keeping me afloat while we were building the restaurant. And, and so, but there seems to be this like, like you selling glow sticks. Yeah. You know, we had Scott on, we recorded his earlier, like painting addresses on curbs. Like Jason from J-Dogs was 
riding the public riding bus. the bus with lumber to fix his shack. Didn't even have a car. I love, I love like, that story. Like, isn't that a great story? <laughs> I mean, same with Vess. Like, like eleven years old, like having a budget. Yeah. And like, mm-hmm. there's just something kind of inborn. And you look, you know, I'm sure some people look at themselves as like, oh, I'm just selling some stuff on Etsy, or like. Yeah, I'm not a success. I'm selling glow sticks at a stadium at a fireworks show. But in all reality, that's what makes somebody special, powerful. They're getting out of their comfort zone. Most people don't think like that. Yeah. They just are doing their. I feel like I, I could go back to selling glow necklaces <laughs> <laughs> if it all fell down. <laughs> well, and you might make better glow necklaces. Sure. Because, I mean, that's what. It, and, in reality that's what you did with the mocks right yeah you were solving a problem yeah. right mm-hmm. fat feet little kids just fat not feet, funny. little kids no cute shoes i mean everything was like bears or basketballs for boys back then you know right and i was like i just want something cute i love it do you still create do you still are you still involved in like do you still get to think about a new style or no you don't do any of that do you miss it um no i think the part that i like about a brand is um, the early stages and we're beyond like it's we're be, we become scientists at freshly picked right and so no I don't every time I make a suggestion I'm like oh my gosh this would be so cute <laughs> it just like tanks and I'm like oh, I'm just gonna go sit in the corner <laughs> we have this great uh product lead Kelly we recruited her from Abercrombie and Fitch last year she, came, she moved out to Utah never been to Utah no family in Utah oh, wow. and she's leading product and she's very capable, very, very creative, very talented. And I just let her, I mean, I sit in on the meetings and I definitely have a say if I want, but, um, I'm, I think a big part of being an entrepreneur is like recognizing what stage you're in and then having enough humility, um, to adapt to that stage. And right now I kind of just need to get out of the way of product. Hmm. So when you got going, how did you, first kind of build your audience that's a good question um <clears throat> sorry uh i i was sitting at my friend's house and she was breastfeeding her baby and she was looking at instagram with one finger and it was like 2010 2011 and instagram was like super new to the scene and i was like it was like light bulbs like oh my gosh moms are on instagram because it lends itself to a one hand scroll and no other social platforms at the time did like pinterest you needed both hands right. facebook you needed both hands twitter you needed both hands and instagram was just like you could consume so much content with just one hand so i was like i'm put all my eggs in the instagram basket and i had like 2000 followers in january i was like by the end of the year i'm going to have 10000 followers and i just worked my butt off and got the 10,000 followers what, giveaways and commenting. And every time someone follow, go and comment and like hashtags and all the stuff that you can do now still. Yeah. But how much time are you spending? All my time. My husband at one point said that year said, I wish you loved me as much as you love Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, me too. <laughs> I had a goal though. I had, I had things to get done. And then it, and then what happened is it was super incremental from there. So you hit 10,000 within like three months, we'd hit 30,000, a hundred thousand. It was, it was quick. When did it get too big for you to manage it yourself? Um, you mean Instagram? Just like the social media side of it. Um, well, apart from ads, I can still manage social media. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone can. If it's too big, then what, you're maybe doing it wrong. Okay. That did surprise me when you just followed me. Like you did it. Yeah. Like I guess I just was like, she's gonna have to tell a million someone. followers on Instagram. Yeah. That's kind of what I thought. Like, hey, social media department, follow Bam Bams. He is hurt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I think we have we have advertising on there now. We our customer service team answers all the questions and responds to people, but like actual content creation and copywriting and like putting out product, yeah, it's it's not hard. So if you were to start all over again today, mm-hmm. would you do the exact same way? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I think uh, Instagram has shifted and uh, they're really fine tuning an algorithm there right now. And up until about 30,000, you're kind of under the radar. But once you get above 30,000, they really want you to pay to play. And so 
it was just like a little bit different. I think the best thing to do if you're starting a business right now is build a community via a private Facebook group and then really focus on gathering emails and then make Instagram growth kind of a second thing. Interesting. Huh. How do I do that? Just content. Are you just saying content or if you is that for anybody, any business or yeah, if you sell so, things? Yeah. Like for you, I would, if people attend your class, say you get to be part of a private Facebook group and I'm going to put recipes <sighs> in there. That's a great idea. And then tell your customers like, Hey, join this private Facebook group. Cause we're going to get some discounts. Yeah. So, some... so why I say that is cause, uh, the algorithm is not private Facebook groups, uh, skirt by the algorithm. It doesn't apply. Okay. So if you're part of a private Facebook group, you see every post. Got it. How do you learn all that? You know, one thing that I will say that I've never taken advantage of, you've always been so nice. Let's do it, Like Cam. Susan has always offered to like kind of take me under wing and teach me more about social media. And I've never taken advantage of it. But how, how do you stay on top of all that? How do you, how do you learn about the algorithm? Like what are you doing? I to, don't, I, we have really smart people that work there. And just know it. Yeah. And I always fight with our ad guy. <laughs> <laughs> why because mine's intuitive with no numbers to back it up and he has numbers to back it right. up and i'm like you're wrong and he's like well look here like, <laughs> <laughs> like science is stupid <laughs> exactly exactly See, i'm like that i'm a heart and feel guy like if it feels right i'll do it but it's it works it works until a certain number right and then and then you got to get really calculated about it it's amazing how stagnant my it's kind of like one step forward, two steps back with my social media. Like yeah. if I get an influencer to post, mm -hmm. you know, and well, I've you never, I've never gotten should, an influencer should, should to post. Should we talk about Cameron's social media now? Well, that, <laughs> <laughs> Happy to do it. That, I mean, sure. Whatever, you need to separate Cameron, the chef. See, I hear, I the hear barbecue that we guy just talked about this. From Bam Bam's the restaurant. They need, really? they need to be two separate things. Yeah. See, I hear, I hear, I hear both ways. And I have a personal one, but but how do you do that? Because I'm funny and fun, and what else do I do? I just post pictures of meat every day. That's what people are coming for. <sighs> but the swatchos, can you just see a slow mo <laughs> of the swatchos going with some, some Marvin Gaye in the background? Porn. Yeah, cheese porn. Your brisket actually, picture. actually, yeah, that's true. you need. I'll, I have. I actually have a ton of ideas. Let's talk. Oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna come out there. I'll bring food for the office. Sure. Get some information. That'd be great. So did you ever look, but do you ever think back to glow stick? We'll call it glow stick Susan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and cause I hear you talking like you're obviously a brilliant person. Like you're obviously very, very smart. But when you think of food stamps, glow stick Susan mm -hmm. and what you know now, yeah. Like, do you ever look back and just go, that is, it's a freaking miracle. Like it's so cool. <laughs> What do you mean? Like it's well, a miracle that I'm just, where I'm sitting now. I, I think it. I think there's a lot of people that don't realize. There's a lot of glow stick Susans out there right yeah. now. They don't realize that. I mean, you sit on boards and you have a board and you have this amazing big company. And yeah. 10, 15 years ago, you were selling glow sticks at fireworks shows. Like you yeah. didn't know about corporate structure and no. all these different things. And I mean, do you ever look back and just go, how the crap did I do this? No, no. I think... Um, I think you set a small goal and then you reach that goal and the whole world opens up to you of what's available. And then you set another small goal and you reach that goal and it happens again. Right. Um, I think there's a term for that. My friend Jill, she knows that she's super smart. What was that first small goal for you? <clears throat> so I was sitting in the Target parking lot crying because I couldn't buy whatever I wanted to at Target. So my goal was I just want to make enough money to buy whatever I want at Target. Okay. <laughs> I freaking love you. I'm not joking. That is amazing. And then you... <laughs> My wife has that same goal. <laughs> Who doesn't, right? <laughs> oh, man. That is great. Um, so, and then you think, and then you get to that that point, Come whatever. On. whatever. How, how do you measure that, though? I mean, like that one specifically, were you just finding like... Oh, well, yeah. when I was making $500 a month, I was like, ooh, I can, I'm rich. Yeah. <laughs> I can buy whatever I want at Target. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So all of Target or the grocery well, I mean, side? I don't, or like, I don't, I'm, I'm a simple girl, Cameron. Right. right. I actually am. Did you I, say no, that facetiously? No, I, I didn't. You know, a new that, pair you're, of you're Jays very, and a new black shirt and right. I'm happy. That, I love it. Are you, are you a sneakerhead? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm a nostalgic consumer. Okay. Yeah. A nostalgic I don't think consumer? I've ever heard that term before. I know. I made it up. I Jordan 4s <laughs> and that's it. 
Jordan 4s. That's my favorite I Jordan just, now. I just got those. The, yeah, the they're breads. the best. They yeah. fit the biggest yeah. for me. Like, yeah, they're I've, wider. Yeah. They look so cool when you look down. I yeah. just got the bread 4s. I, so I, people always challenge me like, yeah. ooh, I bet you don't have these. And I'm like, I don't even know what those are called. <laughs> so you're not on StockX and, <laughs> no, no, and sneakers I'm not, I'm not and I'm not a sneakerhead. I'm just a nostalgic maybe mass consumer. <laughs> so what's nostalgic huh. about the 4s for you? Just how um, It was the year I graduated. Oh, there you yeah, go. From high school. Okay. So 97, 98 is when they came out. That cool. is a, I, I think that that is a term that should totally stick. Because I think there's a lot of people that you could consider nostalgic consumers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't have right? the time to invest in being a sneakerhead. Right. Uh, I'm totally. trying to run a business. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like, I'll get on Facebook Marketplace because they're really good at like showing you things mm-hmm. that you would want. It's because they're listening My, to your conversations. I, it's which true. I like. It, I love it. I, I kind of dig it. T- it's going to get me in trouble, but I, I, I bet you're going to get an ad for a therapist when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true. <laughs> hey, I got to learn some more terms. But Ford Broncos. It was my first car. I, I've always loved Ford Broncos, mm-hmm. and it's amazing. The Ford Broncos. Ke- yeah, the two door, yeah. the full size, not Shell? the lame Bronco two. Or uh, the new Bronco comes out next year. I'm excited to see what they do with it. But it's like it's it's a slow. I mean, really nowadays it would be a crappy car, but I still want to have another one mm-hmm. and so nostalgic consumer i think that's really applicable at least to me so, so one of my favorite questions to ask is how are you helping your kids have the same outlook entrepreneur spirit that you had like what are you doing because they're growing up in different circumstances than you grew up with mm-hmm. right and so how do you how do you pass that on to them um well my daughter, for example, just ran her first summer camp. She's 12. She just ran a summer mm-hmm. camp? Mm-hmm. It was only two days, um, but she has three planned for the summer. That's so awesome. Wow. And um, How did she come up with that idea? Uh, my niece does them. Okay. And so I was like, well, you should do one. And she's like, okay. Uh, so she did a su- superhero s- summer camp. Okay. And 11 spots at 20 bucks a pop. So she's feeling like top of the world. Um, and then she's doing two more, uh, one in, one in July and one in August. And I think for me with my kids, the biggest thing is like, um, giving them leadership opportunities is the easiest. And I, I would say best, but I could be wrong. And it's as simple as like, don't order for your kid at the restaurant. Let them order, let them get, let them get used to telling people what they want Mm -hmm. and exactly how they want it. That's a leadership opportunity. That's mm. such a, it's easy. I, I hope everyone does that. Right. It makes total sense. Well, and it's but such you a don't pain in the it. butt, right? Because you're like, what do you want? Okay, I'll order for you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because as I think <laughs> about that, like my kids that are the most, I don't know what the word is, confident or out there, they will just speak up and order their own food. Mm-hmm. Where my quieter ones, they just kind of sit back and it's like, hey, dad, mm-hmm. I want this. Yeah. And I was a late bloomer. I didn't, I, I didn't start my company until I was 30. Yeah. So... You can definitely learn stuff later if you didn't have anything growing up. I grew up super scrappy. I'm sorry. I had to buy my own school clothes in high school. So I, I remember one summer tr- between my junior and my senior year, all my friends are out partying. I had three jobs. I was like a lifeguard during the day. I was a waitress wait late at night and I worked at the mall, Lady Foot Locker, you know, <laughs> getting <laughs> those sneaks a in. There's more head in there. And um, I, there was not, except for Sundays, I worked every single day. And it was like 18, 12, 18 hours a day. And, but man, I looked fresh going back to school. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had the rewarding feeling of knowing that you, you did it. Well, and it was, it was where I learned that if you want more, you work harder. Right. And I think some people are like, well, I only have this one job. What can I do? Well, stay later, do extra projects. Um, try to move up the corporate ladder, see what that's going to take. Um, do something on the side, use your hands, do, you know, do whatever you can. What's the most common advice around that, that you hear that you hate, that you wish people would stop giving? I don't know. (laughs) Like, do you, is there something that, you know, people talk about, or maybe someone tried to give you advice you didn't listen to that you were really happy that you didn't listen to No, I think everyone, I think if you don't like advice, don't listen to it, whatever. But I think like what I'm saying will resonate with some people and that will really help them get to the next stage, but it won't resonate with everyone. And what's like Scott Warner said will resonate with some people. Right. So I think all advice is good advice as long as it comes from the right spot. Yeah. That's really good. 
Well, I think it has to make sense too. Sure. You know, it's like sometimes it's just, it's how it's presented a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Like some things don't click with me for a while until it's, it's kind of like talking about social media. Mm -hmm. Like it just, I never really looked at it as kind of like what we were talking about before is just social media is hard for me because I don't want to look like a douche. Like I don't want to make it all about me. And yeah. so it's it's hard to it's hard for me to post. I'm really inconsistent. Right. I but I've those. never really looked at social media. <laughs> Shut up, Susie. Well, you're trying to sell burgers, you're trying to get like <laughs> burgers. Bur Briskets. Oh, is that where we are? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never really treated social media the way that I do like because just like you said earlier, there's there's parts of the business that I can't do. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a bookkeeper. if you have a business, you need to look at social media as a sales channel. Right. Yeah. And so, but I've never really looked at it like I invest in a bookkeeper because mm -hmm. I can't do that. I invest in an accountant because I can't do that. Why have I not invested in somebody to help me with social media? Uh, because it's uh, because it's uh, the wild, wild west, and it's just like hiring. If you if you don't know about if you if you're not good at it, it's like hiring a developer when you don't exactly know how to like code. Right. You really don't know if it's working until like six months after, and you don't know it's not working until six months in. Right. And so it's hard to know who but, to hire. But when you say consistency is a part of it, like consistency, like posting consistently. It is, depends. What, what's your goal? Here we to go, post Pam. consistently. No, no. What, why? <laughs> Here, why would here's you what even I've noticed. Social media. Here's what I've noticed. With, the biggest reason is for like I've noticed that when I post, mm -hmm. I I can quantify. I, I more see people more come into co the restaurant. Exactly. Okay. But I have to have kind of low hanging fruit to post. Like I've got to have something like, oh, that'd be cool. Right. But then I'll go two weeks. Like right. I'm not actively thinking about. So here's here's what you're gonna do. I love this. Okay, so we're gonna do a little social media training. Super easy. I'll give you all my tools that I use. They're really slick. And then you're going to have like two different photographers come in and photograph the kind of the same thing. You're going to get totally different content right. and you're going to bank all that content. We're going to schedule it out oh, for like months yes. and you're going to pay those photographers a meet and then you're going to post like at least three times a week, three times a week. Yeah. But see, in essence, that's what I'm talking about. That's me hiring out photographers. And then you need one of these cute boys. Who's the cutest one out there? Cutest <sighs> or the most engaging. Know. He's had one of the girls do it. Why? Because they're more engaging than the guys. Yeah, like the bench girls. Nothing to do with boy or girl. It's no. Just the, the people they have who more are personality. More engaging. Yeah. You think? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Nothing like, to do with male right. or female. Don't don't worry about it. Listen. You keep your I, I'll apart. just I do I I just like to be quiet so you can think that I'm like <laughs> exactly. judging you silently. She's just trying to be like, what are you saying? Listen, we have this guy named I won't even say his name <laughs> at my work. And I call I tell him to his face, he might get mad at me, but it's aspirational fantasy. Like he's so good looking right. that the moms just really respond to him <laughs> <laughs> in an amazing way. And so I, he is my, he is my silver bullet. Man. He's your go-to. Uh, no, no, he, is, I starve them out. <laughs> <laughs> he's like once a quarter, put Tommy on. Oh, that's his name. But <laughs> <laughs> we need this supposed to do well. Put Tommy on Tommy. No, your audience. To work so, um, yeah. And then you just have someone doing stories. Right. Yeah, See, and that's what I need because I'm not, I'm not good at doing that stuff. Like, I need somebody to help me to remember. To I post. think, I think the thing with social media is uh, a goal of I want to have more followers is not a good goal. Yeah, I don't care about that. I would, I want sales to go. Well, up in you the do, restaurant. you do want followers because it means that more people will come in. Well, well, I guess that's true. Yeah, but just to have more followers, to have more followers, like, come yeah. On. Well, I don't. Yeah. Oh, I thought of advice that I don't like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's when it. people make you feel frantic like you're going to be too late. Is it too late to fill in the blank? Right? Is it too late to start an Instagram account? Is it too late to start a business? Is, is it, it too late to start a podcast? Is it too late huh. to start a podcast? And the answer is no. It's never too late. Do what you want to do. Come at it with passion, love, and that's what shines through. See, that's great advice. I mean, I didn't find barbecue till I was 31. I, I mean, I didn't even know how to grill a burger, really. And now it's your life. And now it's my life. You didn't know how to make life. a burger? I mean, I, I, could, do a, I could do a burger. <laughs> but, but I mean, I, kn I didn't know what a smoker was. Yeah. Like, I had no interest in barbecue. But I, I saw it on TV when I was 31, and it mm -hmm. just was like, that looks cool. Yeah. It's kind of the same. Did it you was say, the they're not smarter than me? <laughs> no, it's just like, I don't remember what I thought. It definitely felt accessible to me. It's just cooking. Mm -hmm. But when I started doing it, I never thought it would be a business. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And it was you. It was the same with you, right? I mean, you right, you, you weren't looking to start bit. a business. You were trying to just get shoes yeah. that fit your kids' feet. Yeah, that were cute. Right. So you do a little bit, and then it opens up. It's like, oh, I could actually do something with this. And yeah. and maybe that's the message. Maybe the message is like, if you're doing something that you love doing, take a step back. You might have a business. Well, hold you on. might I, have a. I think it's not take a step back. It's take a step forward. You got to start doing something first. Like, you you can't come up with the idea of moccasins and just kind of in tech intellectually think about it yeah plan it out you had to start making them go out there and put yourself out there first yeah. you just start cooking before so i think it's take a step forward it's supposed to take a step back well and, and maybe i i think what what i'm saying is there are so many people that love doing things as let's call them hobbies right or they're trying to solve a problem mm-hmm. but how many people don't look at it as a way to either side hustle like you said or turn it into a business because they're just doing something that they like yeah and that's how barbecue started for me the first few years it was just like i was obsessed but i wasn't making money or even aspiring to make money i just wanted to cook good barbecue and impress my neighbors and friends and and it would have been interesting to think like hey it's like glow sticks right Mm -hmm. i mean those that gave you skills to to start your side hustle and Mm -hmm. So yeah, pro I think tip: it's... always have a baby on you when you're selling <laughs> glow necklaces. I'm not joking. That's really funny. <laughs> I do remember us. Right, you're it. gonna you're gonna buy the glow necklaces from for the girl sure. and the baby for, for sure. sure. It's yeah, it's like yeah, if there's someone on the side of the street with the kid with them asking for something. You're gonna stop and yeah, you're more compassionate. I wasn't. Let, let's get it straight though. <laughs> <laughs> I was not on the side of the street. I was at a perfectly <laughs> reputable state fair type situation. With a lot of other people Isn't who that work funny? hard for their money. We did that. We used to take little brothers out selling alarms, like our little eight, nine-year-old brothers. Just out here learning from me. Uh-huh. Did like, you oh, have a hey. paper route? I did. Me too, I've yeah. Had, I had a paper route. For, I, I'd use my roller blades. For you young people. <laughs> yeah, for you young people. Paper route was... Had paper route. You had a paper route? I yeah. did. Yeah, paper routes were the worst. They oh, you had to wake up early. Every day. Papers. And I had to yes. do porch to it. Like, I had, like porch. it had to be on the yeah, porch. Same. Uh-huh. Same. And that was a pain. Um, the worst though, you had the, the the storm doors. Oh yeah. You right. Get them inside of the doors. You had to go and open the door. Yeah. And the four paper. in the morning and yeah. be really quiet. Or there's dogs. The folding. We was would the worst. beg our dad on Christmas, please do the paper route for us, please. <laughs> <laughs> All we want for Christmas, you for you to just oh, paper route. Paper routes. I I mean that was such a classic kid job. We like, would never let our children go out. That's no. like four thirty in the morning now. Ten year olds, no. Yeah. Walk around the neighborhood, no. I would never. Especially with newspaper people. So a really Some weird funny people. story. A newspaper. I was pulling out one morning to go to the gym, and as I pull out of my driveway, this car just tears out of my neighborhood. I was like, okay, that's really weird. And then it, as I pull out, it pulls into another car, another house and sits there. Oh. I was like, oh, what's going on with this? So I slowly creep around, and it as I get closer, it pulls out, takes off again. I was like what is going on with this? <laughs> and so I follow it for a little while and then t- turns up the street and I go around the other one to try to catch it. And as I'm coming around, kid jumps out and he's got newspapers in his hands. I was chasing the newspaper kid because he's not <laughs> delivering papers. <laughs> People still get the paper? Yeah, People isn't that weird? The there are a few out there. But it was so funny. Often. I was like, who is this kid and what That's is going dying, on in my neighborhood? Totally. Literally dying, yeah. I mean, a kid wouldn't know what to do if he saw a newspaper. So... So what's next? What's keeping you excited now? Because you've done, I mean, we went with Mox. Mm-hmm. You licensed, you got some really cool, like mm-hmm. Disney. Yeah. One side story that I have to tell, and it has to do with both of you. Oh, here we go. Do you remember? No. What he? Do you remember what he? Oh, You yeah. remember the courtside seats? Oh, yeah. That I do was remember him. the courtside seats. Do you remember that? Yeah. That was so- it's, Look at the picture right below you. It's right down there. Of you and I sitting you together. Do you remember when Steph Curry came over and talked so to that, us? So <laughs> that was the story I was going to tell is is you worked with I, Aisha, Aisha Curry, mm-hmm. right? So Andrew. Hit. We also talk about how sports are lost on me. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we went out to dinner with all those people and you guys are talking about <sighs> basketball. And I know you were thinking, who invited her? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I had nothing to contribute. so much fun. Nothing. So Andrew invited Susan and I. And we, what was it, a half? Did we get to sit down mm-hmm. there? So that, so, and a couple we, other people. Yeah, there were a couple other people. But Susan and I got to sit courtside for half of the Warriors Jazz games like three or four years ago. 
and we're just sitting there and Steph Curry runs up to Susan and just gives her a hug and I'm just sitting there like holy crap <laughs> and that's when I found out that they kind of work together and she introduces him to me and I was just kind of freaking out but do you still work with him at all no is he good <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's kind of good <clears throat> so so yeah that was so so the celebrity thing mm-hmm. i'm sure that was kind of cool sure celebrities don't really actually sell product for you right i'm sure you've noticed it's yeah. like a good hype train it's fun if you can like maximize the reach from that right but they don't actually sell much product. It's like credibility. Like sure. I think it's people look cred. at it. It's a story. It's credibility. Mm-hmm. But you're right. It's not like. So what moves the needle then? Um, every day. Like you, yeah. your wife telling the neighbor, good advertising, good community building. Yeah. Good product. Okay. So yeah. So you moved and then you did some licensing with like mm-hmm. Hello Kitty, Disney. Care Bears. Disney. Care Bears. Yeah. And then you did the diaper bags. Diaper bags are So obviously massive. the mom thing is very, that's your passion, so, right? That's your target. So we, we, we design product for mom as a mom. Right. Not mom as a woman, not mom as a wife, but mom as a mom. What does that mean, mom as a mom? Like so the, how she's momming okay. when she's being a mom and how she's interacting with the product that she buys. That's where we like to design product. Like so are you trying to solve, pro- like make things easier? Yeah, or? we solve problems and we... Um, want her to look fashionable and feel like she is a woman and feel like I'm not just a mom, but we definitely are designing product for mom as a mom. Well, I kind of feel like one thing that I dig about the box and, you know, I think dads don't really care about this stuff that much, but I found myself like, it's cool that you can really kind of create some individuality with your kids because mm-hmm. there's so many different Plus styles with those big and... meaty hands. How many other kids <laughs> shoes can you put on your kids feet? Okay. I will say that. Like the mocks are the greatest because they just, the elastic. Can we look at Cameron has like 10 inch fists (laughs) just in case you can't see. So like you, how many, like you probably won't even fight a kid. Oh no. No. If it's not like easy slip on or flip flops, it well not to mention I'm six, five. So I have to like, I put him up on tables and What if he was like 4'11 and had 10 inch fists? Oh my gosh. Like Hobbit, (laughs) big hairy feet, big hairy hands. Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. So, but. Is there anything on the horizon? Because I imagine you've got to kind of keep yeah. creating. And so the fringe, I'm really excited about the fringe and what it's done um, to our customer lifetime value and our customer life cycle. And um, this year we have uh, really, I, gosh, we have some really amazing licenses that I can't talk about yet. Oh, Ooh. oh come on. No. Please, I'll give you a brisket sandwich. <laughs> no, because we signed those contracts. You I know, I Put all it. that marketing money up, but it's going to be a magical time. You know, and <laughs> I, I, does it play into your, um, what did we call that consumer? The uh, Nostalgic. Nostalgic. Does it play into that for we, you? We definitely do Disney, that. Care Bear, yeah, Care Bears are, was super nostalgic right. for me. Um, so we definitely do that, but, um, we're looking at, uh, so, so with all of our licenses, we're considered a halo brand, which means that they don't actually expect us to sell a lot, but just us being, uh, like, uh, in a, in a partnership with them, uh, works well with both brands. Right. Yeah. Well, especially I would imagine that cause you're, you're cause considered we're not moving like, Walmart. Right. You're units. premium. Like you're a sure. premium brand, Proudly right? Premium. Yeah. Right. Proudly mm-hmm. premium. I mm-hmm. like that. I need to start calling my barbecue that when people start complaining about how expensive it is. Really? Because it's expensive they meat. They, they complain. Explain. All the they time. They complain. <laughs> yeah. And then I have to explain that I buy expensive cows. Really expensive. You start calling it unicorn meat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's a good idea. So is there a new product? I mean, so the licensing thing you like. Yeah. I, I mean, mean how has that affected we're, we're the brand? So we don't talk about new product till it comes out. So I can't tell you the exciting. But there, but there are new yeah. products, oh, yeah. not have, just licenses. There yeah, are new things. We have a ton of new that... product that's coming out. We have new um, licenses that are coming out. 2019 is a really stacked, fun year. I can tell you're excited right now because sometimes you're in here and you just, you know, like we talk and I can just tell you're a little hammered. You're just a little like, not hammered as in drunk, <laughs> but like just drink. tired, you know, just yeah. like, ugh, like you're not having a ton of fun, but oh, you no, seem I a little bit. I always have fun. It's just like running a business is, it's hard. Oh, I met. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because I've come to all your offices, you know, mm-hmm. to feed you guys. And I remember when you moved into Provo and mm-hmm. that was awesome. And, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you, you had your office. But I remember the first time coming over to Lehigh. Lehigh. Yeah. And I, it just, 
all of a sudden, like, you intimidated me a little bit. Get real, Cameron. Okay, you don't really. But, <laughs> like, just because we're tight. But we have the if smallest I office in but, that building. <laughs> they gave still, us a closet. <laughs> I mean, compared to, like, what you started from. and mo- like, Oh, food stamps. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was glow necklace glow, season glow down there. Glow sticks and food stamps. Like, yeah. here's this big, beautiful office. And there's, it's just moving and shaking. Mm-hmm, there's lots, lots of going on. Yeah. And it's like, man, do you ever just look out of your office and go, holy crap. I think um, no more I look at it and go, there's a lot of people to take care of. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. And that, uh, I mean, that's, is there something that you do specifically to retain those, like that you mentioned the the product person? Yeah, like, so we we were doing like once a month, camera, Bam Bams would come in and that was like really good retention tool. But now we have to like pay people more and <laughs> give them benefits. Listen, you realize I'm just an ADHD kid. So all you got to do is send one, hey, swatch a day. And it's like, I, I would do it. I'm not um, going to say no to you. Gosh, we do our best. Uh, Silicon Slopes is growing so much, like just... Utah in general and um you really have to like have a lot of perks and a lot of like good stuff going on like what kind of perks oh you gotta have food and you gotta have all the good stuff I think what we're what I always like to tell people is like hey we're building something amazing here and we want you to be part of it uh freshly picked as there's not a lot of good there's not a lot of consumer companies in Utah so it's it's a good place to be wow what is the end game with freshly picked is it um, for me, I've always wanted to build a legacy brand. And for me, what that means is my grandchildren are wearing Freshly Picked, but I'm not necessarily working at Freshly Picked. Okay. 400 so. pound friends are wearing Freshly Picked? <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Gosh dang it. So if you're not... If- <laughs> I'm going to send you Ugg slippers. <laughs> I just want to be like your Lane Bryant model. Like, I want you to start a big and no, tall. No. Cameron. Like you have basketball friends. Yeah. I know, but they we don't get wear. Stance involved. Go away. We can get the 17, you know, size 17. Okay, fine. <laughs> Air pockets. <laughs> so crazy. So I'm sure you have a lot of people who are coming to you asking for advice, kind of look to you maybe as a mentor. Do you have someone that you have always kind of turned to for advice or over the years as you've grown, maybe you've established new relationships that you kind of look to as mentors? Yeah. So I think one of my... Um, unfair advantages is that I really, I, I always surround myself with people who are smarter than me in ways that I'm not. So I, um, I kind of look at my skill set and I'm like, I, Oh, I need to augment here, or like fill in here. And I, I would say to anyone listening or to anyone out there, you need to have a personal board of directors. And at first it starts out with like your uncle, who's like a tax accountant and you maybe know a lawyer down the street or whatever it mm-hmm. is. And like, the friend that shoot that shoots it to you straight and like will not feel sorry for you under any circumstance. And those are, that's, that's like kind of your personal board and you will outgrow that board. And some people don't mind being outgrown. Some people it's hard. They, yeah. they like take it personally, but I always, I have probably six people that I am always talking to about stuff that's happening outside of my organization, outside of my personal board. Okay. Yeah. Have any of your board evolved with you as you've grown and evolved? Yep. Have any of them kind of mm-hmm. done the same? Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's probably been pretty hard. Like with, with your growth, like it's probably, that'd be hard for me. I'm not very good at like, I've outgrown you. I need to Yeah, but you on. notice like when you, at first when you ask someone a question and they're like, oh, here's step by step what you need to do and here's how you're going to fill. Right. And you're like, oh, that's such valuable advice. And then you go to them like six months later and you're like, here's the problem. And their answer just maybe is like one or two steps down from what you know you need. Right. It's not shooting. It's not like, let me tell you um, this is going to happen. And so you kind of do need to find people who've walked the path before you. Right. And I think sometimes if you go to someone, like if I went to someone who built a billion dollar company, their advice wouldn't be applicable to mine. Right. So I just need to, you just need to find that next stage. But wouldn't it, isn't it hard to like, once you realize the, the company or the business has outgrown a person that may be a friend, Mm -hmm. like with your growth, I imagine there's been some tough decisions to be made, like personal decisions Mm -hmm. where it's just like, man, I've got this thing, it's growing. And this person isn't, you know, up to snuff anymore. Those are the, those are, those are the decisions that make you an entrepreneur. 
Right. Otherwise, you're just a business owner. Inter- that's yeah. That's interesting. So you can be a business owner. Sure. And like keep doing what you're doing and build a business and take home money. But if you're you do like you you have to you have to move on from people. Right. Yeah. Am I just a business owner? <laughs> Sometimes that's hard. I mean, but it's very hard. Yeah, it, it is. Especially like, when it's family. And then the right. next round you go, oh, I'm not picking family this time <laughs> around. <laughs> and then the next time you go, oh, I'm not picking friends the next time around. Right. We've and talked about the family thing. You know what, though? Time kind of just manages all that it wrinkles it all like it irons all, all the wrinkles out. And so even if it does get kind of hairy, just give it six months. Right. Yeah. That's a good point. Cause that, I mean, life is like that. Yeah. I mean, you have an argument with somebody time mellows mm-hmm. it out and then you get over it. Yeah. So very, very cool. So if you're not involved in freshly picked, what are you involved in? Like w- in your mind, like, is there this either cool new idea? Do you want to just kind of be, an angel investor to all these Mm -hmm. startups like what would be exciting for you get you out of bed excited every day if you're not involved at freshly picked i mean uh, i'm not good at that like i think for me i need to i'm in like i'm in i'm in the weeds right now yeah and so i can't even you can't go there it's like asking a girl who's eight months pregnant when she's gonna have another baby (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's a great way to put it and and like <laughs> that's a great way to put it. man i just want to get this one out <laughs> yeah. so i'm 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 busy with freshly picked and i'm invested a hundred percent in freshly picked and I, there's no part of me that's going when this is over this except for i've always said when i sell freshly picked i want to go dark and like not have a presence on instagram and not have anyone know who i am and i i don't know if that's a possibility but why do you want to do that um, I'm just a very private person. Yeah. And it'd be nice to just. See, that's what I want. So is it, is it unnatural for you then to be on social? Because like, you've done for, so well on it. How yeah. Is, I mean, f- for me, for me. Yeah. No, I, I don't like to do it. Okay. For me, for the business, like for some reason people are interested and they want to follow along and they find me compelling. Yeah, I'll do it all day. That's why I went on Shark Tank. I don't care about Shark Tank for me. Yeah. But, oh, I'll make sales. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do anything. But was it hard because it isn't natural for you, for you, when you look at it for your business where you're like, ah, maybe that's not no, no, you know, um, the path I want to go down. No, I mean, no, no. Okay. Once, once I know it's not for me, it's for the business. I think that's, that's with anything in life though, right? A lot of times you can't wrap your head around it, but if you can align your priorities to where you can see it crystal clear, then it's super easy to do. So if you're having a hard time wrapping your head around something that you need to do for the business, you need to realign your priorities, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So what do you do for fun? What are your hobbies? Because so I, you know. I, I take about eight hours worth of naps on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I'm so boring. I like to clean my room. <laughs> you like to clean your room? I really like to organize and clean. Uh, I like it's to hang like out Jenna. with my kids. Um I like to. I can tell you love. Like, I'm a homebody, actually. I love the post with your kids. Like you're very proud of your kids. Mm-hmm. My goal right now is to make them laugh every day. 